Time to talk about light. Well, we've learned a lot of things about waves, particularly what we saw in the ripple tank. And the question that we want to ask is, is light a wave? So in the ripple tank, we learned four tests, four things that waves do, water waves anyway. And we want to see if light waves do them. And the four things are reflection. We had water waves bouncing off of a yellow boundary. And we found that there is a re relationship between the waves coming in and the waves going out. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So we want to see, does light do that? There's refraction or bending. When light goes uh, from one medium to another, does it bend? Because in the ripple tank, when water waves went from a deep end to a shallow end, they change direction, which is called refraction. We want to see if light does that. Does light diffract? Diffraction is the spreading out of waves beyond an obstacle or a barrier in their way. Does light do that? And finally, does light interfere? If there are two sources of light, will I see constructive and destructive interference, maximums and minimums, nodes and anti-nodes? So let's explore this. Let's first of all talk about reflection. So let's remember what happened in the ripple tank. In the ripple tank, we had a boundary, which was a big yellow plastic thing. And we had water waves made by the ripple maker. And those water waves came in and they hit the boundary. And then the water waves reflected off like this. So what we did is we represented the incoming water waves with one line. And this is called a ray. And then we represented the reflected line waves with another line, also a ray. So we'd say that's the incident ray, that's the reflected ray. Then we drew in a reference line to make measurements, and this reference line is called the normal because it's perpendicular to the barrier. So that's the normal line for measuring. And we noticed that when we made this drawing that we drew in at the angle that the incident waves are making with the normal. And we call that angle the incident angle, which here is labeled I. And in the same way, we measured the angle that the reflected rays, the reflected waves made with the normal. And that too, we measured. And that's called the reflected angle. And so we got the law of reflection, which simply said, that the angle of incidence, they call it I, equals the angle of reflection. And that's called the law of reflection, and we're going to see if uh, light does that. Now there's actually two types of reflection. There's what's called regular reflection, there's what's called diffuse reflection. Now regular reflection is what you see with mirrors. So let's say that's a mirror. So each light ray that hits the mirror, and these are all the light rays that are coming in to hit the mirror, they all bounce off at the same angle that they came in at. So let's follow this one, bounces off like that, and this one bounces off like that. All of them, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So when all, if all these waves come in parallel, they all reflect out parallel. So that's why I can see myself in the mirror, because... The waves that are reflecting off the mirror have the same organization as the waves that came into the mirror. So the name of that is regular reflection. Now diffuse reflection is when the surface is kind of bumpy. So I might know that the way that I see the paper, see what's written on a piece of paper, is by light reflecting off it. But the question I could ask is if light is reflecting off the paper, why don't I see myself in the paper like I do in a mirror? And the answer is, since the surface of the paper is rough and bumpy, although angle of incidence still equals angle of reflection, the surfaces that the light rays hit are all kind of at different angles, and they're all rough, so it's bouncing off of different faces, like of a mountain range. So if the light waves all come in parallel, they are coming out at all different angles. So the reflected rays have no organization compared to the incident waves, and therefore I can't see myself in the mirror, or on a piece of paper, I can't see myself in the piece of paper 
but I can see the piece of paper. So that's called diffuse reflection. That's the kind of reflection off of paper, let's say, or off of things that are rough. Regular reflection is off of things that are smooth like mirrors. Now the reason I can see myself in a mirror is illustrated in this diagram where here's some object and light rays are leaving the object and they're bouncing off of the mirror using angle of incidence. So I could draw a normal here and the angle that the light rays are coming in at is equal to the, light, to the angle that the reflected waves make and those light waves bounce off the mirror and they go into my eye. But my eye, or actually my brain, does not really understand this bending, this bouncing thing right here, that my eye doesn't really understand the mirror thing. My eye always believes that light has always traveled in a straight line. So if light is coming into my eye off the mirror, and I know that it really came from this object and bounced off, my eye believes that those light rays have always traveled in a straight line, so my eye sees an object that is behind the mirror, tracing these light waves back to where it looks like. It looks like they're coming from here. We know that the light has bounced off the mirror like this, but it looks like the light rays are coming right from here and going into my eye. So in my brain, I view an image right here, which is an image of the source of the light rays, which is called an object. So if there's really an object here sending light rays off the mirror, my brain thinks that there's really a source of light behind the mirror. Now the distance of the object in front of the mirror, which they label here as DO, and the distance that the image appears behind the mirror, those two distances are equal. So the image appears to be behind the mirror, the same distance that the object is in front of the mirror. So now let's talk about refraction. And the question is, does light change direction, which is called refraction, when it's entering a different medium? Now in the ripple tank, the different medium was a shallow end. So we had light water waves go from the deep end to the shallow end, and we saw the waves bend or change direction, which is called refraction. So if you look at these two pictures here, you'll notice here this blue wave comes in and it hits this plastic piece and it changes its direction, it bends it. So that's refraction. And this yellow one bends once and it goes inside and then it bends again when it comes out. And this red one here, notice, bounces off the surface and doesn't come out, goes through the plastic down to here and then comes out. So clearly the light is changing direction. Now this picture here, this is some liquid material and this is a powerful light beam. And I notice that the light beam is bending when it goes into the liquid. And I also see that it bounces off. So some of this light energy is reflected and some of it's transmitted into the light and that transmitted light is bent or refracted. So it looks like the answer to this question is yes. All right, let's look a little more carefully at that picture. Uh, here's the light beam, and here's the new medium right here. So the light beam, when it gets here, does two things. One is reflect off, and I notice that the angle of incidence, which would be right here, and the angle of reflection, which would be right here, they don't have it marked, those two angles are equal. So I can see the law of reflection is maintained here but I also see that the direction of this light wave is changed. It's bent. It's refracted. I notice that this angle is smaller than that, so we would say that this ray is bent towards the normal because this angle is smaller than that. So this is an important principle. The light ray, when it slows down, is bent towards the normal. Now this diagram has all of the important things uh, defined. So you have the incident ray, you have the normal line, the reference drawing line, and there is the incident angle, and then you have the refracted or bent ray in the new material, and the refracted angle. And we're going to later on develop a relationship between this angle and this angle and this medium and this medium. So to summarize, first of all, we can define 
refraction, light travels at different speeds in different media. The change in direction or bending of light at the boundary between two media is called refraction. And it is caused by this fact that the light goes at different speeds in different materials. And here's what we've seen so far. When light slows down, it bends towards the normal. This is just like we saw in the ripple tank. When the water waves went from the deep end to the shallow end, they slowed down, so they bent towards the normal. Now, when light speeds up, it bends away from the normal. Now this bending of light explains a really common phenomena that is easily seen. Uh, if you have a pencil in water, like in this picture, uh, it can look broken. Or when people are standing in shallow water at the beach, their legs look displaced when it is viewed in the water. And that's because the light here, so the pencil really goes like this, but the light leaving the pencil, when it comes from the water and out into the air, is bent and that makes the pencil look broken. Let's look a little more carefully at that. Now on this website, which is physicsclassroom.com, they have a nice diagram over here that kind of illustrates why the pencil looks broken. So here, here's what we see. Uh, when pencils are placed in the water, uh, they appear to be magnified or displaced like this. So here's why that happens. Uh, look at here, you can see here's a pencil, this black dot and it's like you're looking down on a glass of water so you're looking down at the pencil and the blue lines represent the light waves leaving the pencil so they go like this and then they get in the air and they bend and this side of the pencil a blue light ray leaves it and it also is bent so here you can see light waves the blue rays are bent now when they get to my eyes what happens is my eyes do not understand this bending thing that happened so my eyes trace the light rays, these straight light rays here, to where it looks like they're coming from, and it looks like they're coming from over here. So my eyes actually see this pencil in, from the water located over here. So out in the air, I will see the pencil in its normal place. When I look at the part of the pencil that's in the water, it looks like it's over here. So the pencil looks broken. And this also leads to the world-famous penny trick that silly uncles do for their kids where they say, I can make a penny uh, disappear. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to pour water into this jar that has a penny at the bottom. So let's watch what happens. And wow, the penny disappears. Let's see that again. Now, I think you can guess what actually happens. At the beginning here, light from the penny is going into your eyes so that you see it. But as the water is added, light from the from the penny is now bent by the water so it no longer goes into the camera so it looks like the penny has disappeared but actually what's happened is light from the penny now no longer is reaching the camera and therefore it looks like the penny is gone but if you just change the angle that the camera is pointed at the jar you could see the penny again so all the water has done is the water is simply changed the direction of the light coming from the penny